Today, I'm going to be painting a raccoon wearing a sweater. I have my paint brushes here. This is going to be like a fun paint and hang out with me kind of video. So if you have any projects that you wanna work on, feel free to grab your supplies. Let's dive into this. This is Jeffrey the giraffe. His neck is very, very long. He's wearing a suit. It kind of reminds me of a birthday party. Jeffrey looks very serious, but I think he needs a friend. We're going to paint one. I really like painting animals wearing clothing. Something about it is just so playful, mysterious, and it's just not something that you see every day. It gives me a lot of creative freedom to make things up as I go too. So I think that's another reason why I love it. So I'm gonna hang out right here in the corner of the screen so you can still see me, and I'll tell you a little bit about the process. Here I am painting my canvas red, and this is called toning your canvas. You can pick any color you want and just completely cover the canvas before you start your painting. I talk about this a lot because this is a technique that I often use with my paintings. So now I'm gonna draw my raccoon, and I just wanna share with you why I am doing this, like what inspired this. My daughter, if you don't know, I have twins, a boy and a girl. And my daughter really loves this raccoon stuffed animal like so much. So I thought it would be really fun to paint a raccoon because seeing her joy and her just lighting up over a stuffed animal just gives me joy, you know? And then I bought her this sweater recently and was like, yeah, I could see the raccoon wearing that. <laughs> so I'm gonna alter the sweater a little bit to what I have in my mind. But those two things kind of inspired this. A while back, I did like this wood project with a frog on it. That was my son's favorite stuffed animal. So feels like I should balance the two out, you know? Anyway, it was really fun to paint this because in some ways it kind of reminded me of Guardians of the Galaxy. Not what I was going for, but you know, I just love those movies. But uh, yeah. <laughs> and at the beginning here, it looks really creepy because I still haven't filled in the eyes, but I'm just gonna leave it, you know? We can sit with discomfort for a little bit. <laughs> So let's revisit the topic of toning the canvas. I want to say why I chose the red. If you look up close here, you can see that red paint showing through the fur and showing through around the eyes. And that red is going to leak through in a lot of areas of this painting. And I wanted to do a really bright color like that because the other colors that I'm going to go with are going to be a little more like vintagey, muted, moody er colors. You'll see as the painting progresses, but I thought, wow, what tension would this painting have if I put a really bold color in the background? Let's just see how it goes. And yeah, I really love experimenting with that kind of thing. So that's why I'm doing red. If you can't really see it leaking through, Go full screen on your computer or device or whatever and it might be a little easier to see, but it might be kind of hard to see on camera too. I had a lot of fun creating the sweater with the Peter Pan collar. I always want to wear those collars, so I create them a lot in my artwork, but the thing is, they just never look good on me. <laughs> so I kind of live vicariously through it by putting those collars on a lot of the characters that I create, so it has a collar. I really enjoyed doing this sweater because, yeah, I like the color. It was fun just doing different textures. Also, the cozy vibes of the sweater. Yeah, it's that time of year. Let's talk about the background. 
I am so excited for this part, mostly because I have been kind of building an inspiration board for some living room makeovers that I want to do in my own house. And a little bit of this painting is incorporating some of that inspiration. I feel like a lot of things that are going on in my life are speaking through this painting weirdly, but that's what happens when you do art. So anyway, the wallpaper that you're gonna see in the background is kind of like what I wanna do for one of my accent walls. You'll see, you'll see as it goes on. But I thought it would be really fun to make this raccoon seem like a really eclectic creature, animal, you know? Like they collect things. I will just say they're a collector. And you will see what I mean in a little bit. I am trying so hard not to spoil this as I'm describing it, but you will see I busted out this bronze paint here and I'm gonna be painting a lot of shapes in the background. So, because I like to paint and because this raccoon is already like, I don't know, just expressing a lot of things going on in my own life and like my daughter's interests, my interests, I felt like it would be fitting for this raccoon to be an art collector. So the artwork that you're gonna see in the background, I had so much fun with this. Like it's a lot of the types of things that I enjoy painting essentially. <laughs> the raccoon is not collecting my art. Like, well, technically it's my art because I painted this painting. Wow, this just got really complicated. But anyway, this was so fun. Like, it gave me a chance to paint a lot of different types of things in the background and also a fun animal wearing clothing. I thought it would be really fun to paint moths in the background. And that's another thing that I'm planning to do in my house is get some moths mounted in shadow boxes hung up on my walls. I can't wait for that. But anyway, that kind of showed through this painting too. So some information about this painting. It is acrylic on canvas. It is a 12 by 12 painting. I used golden heavy body acrylic paint. I'm trying to say some things that I use more often because I'm not really good at doing that. And then you folks are like, hey, what kind of paint did you use? So I wanna try to be better at providing that information for you guys. Um, let's see, what other things? I just use a butcher tray for my paints. It holds things well. I can spray it with water to keep my paints wet and then I can cover it later. Works out really well. This painting will be a limited edition print in my shop. I will probably actually be selling the painting too because I can just keep the file for like my sentimental value, you know? I have too many paintings in my house, basically. <laughs> but I really enjoyed this too because like this painting, I feel like it's representing a lot of things that are going on in my mind right now. Just like some fun, lighthearted things in my life. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It was just really fun to pull random tidbits of like, oh, I got my daughter this sweater. Um, oh, my daughter likes raccoons. Oh, um, I'm thinking about redecorating part of my house. So let's incorporate that. And I just like mashed all these things together and then it like worked somehow for a painting. So yeah, I don't know. That was wild to me, but there you have it. I think with painting, when you create for the process and pull little pieces of like joy from your life, I mean, you can even pull sorrow and whatever you're going through and just channel it through your art. It is hard to put words on that, but it just does something magical. It really does. It feels good to like get it out in the form of a paintbrush when you don't have words and stuff too. So yeah, feels good. I thought it was really therapeutic doing all the flowers on this wallpaper at the end too. It was just a very repetitive motion, 
And instead of focusing on like the stress of, ooh, this is a pattern, I need to get this down right. I have been like embracing imperfection with patterns and symmetry and that kind of thing and just rolling with it and focusing on like the movement of my body while I'm creating that type of thing. So I don't know if that encourages you at all when your artwork feels overwhelming and you're trying to do a lot of detail, but enjoy the process and the movement of it. And yeah, let me know if it feels like a different thing for you, if it feels less overwhelming. Okay, so now I am doing some final touches on the raccoon's face. I felt like it really needed to be brightened more because it was pretty dark. And after I added all those moody colors in the background, I knew like I could take this a step further and add more dimension to the raccoon's face. So that's what I did there. And I like how it turned out. This was a lot of fun. The bronze color here really glistens too in the light. I just love that. Anyway, here's how this piece turned out. As I said, limited edition prints and the original painting are available at mirabyler.com. I will link it down below. If you want one, you can snag one. No pressure at all to do so. I just like to make my work available. Stickers are coming of this piece. I'm waiting on them, but they will be here probably next week. So if you want a sticker, stay tuned. Also tomorrow is Black Friday and I'm gonna be running a lot of deals in my shop. I have a lot of new stuff dropping, like this enamel pin. I also already released this sticker. This sticker, there's new washi tapes in my shop. There's gonna be new bundles, like mystery bundles and stuff. So yeah, definitely check out mirabyler.com if you want to treat yourself this holiday season get gifts for other people, and do all of that while supporting a small business. Yeah, anyway, I'm just really excited about the stuff I've been working on, and it feels so good to finally share it with you. Also, here's my palette after finishing the painting. I forgot to cover it, so it's all dry. I normally would like to use up all of that, but point being, I think it's pretty. Like, palettes after a painting are so underrated. Like, you know how in finances you're supposed to keep an audit trail of like all the purchases that you've done and stuff for like, if you were to get audited? I don't know, this is like a painting audit trail. Anyway, that's my little rant. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and creating today. If you created anything while you were watching, feel free to share about it down below. I love hearing about what you folks are making. Like, you are brilliant humans and just hearing about all the different types of art you do and the different projects and things that you're passionate about, yeah, blows me away. So that's all, kudos to you folks. And yeah, have a beautiful day, bye.